You're listening to the podcast about, that's right, about nothing. Available on iTunes, YouTube, and SoundCloud.com. Welcome to another episode of the podcast about nothing. I'm here with my lovely wife, Jessie. Hello. And our very special guest, Heather O'Scanlon. How are you doing, Heather? How are you doing, Mark and Jesse? Oh, so mm-hmm. far, so good. Heather is the uh, co-writer, uh, producer of House Broken. It's a short film that is seeing a lot of success at uh, recent film festivals, which Heather will touch on in a second. And um, also, I believe, co-stars of past guest Crystal Scott, if I'm not mistaken. I think she's like nosy neighborhood mom number two. Or something yes, like she she does play a role in my film. She's one of the the uh, <laughs> the gossipy moms gossipy that frown mom. upon me. Yes. <laughs> oh my gosh, I know that lady. <laughs> Everybody knows that lady. Okay, so, uh, before, uh, before we uh, roll all the way, why don't you let everybody know just a little bit about yourself and uh, how you got this film off the ground. Well, I'm primarily, I, I originally, I, I've been an actor pretty much my whole life, ever since I was a, a little kid, and, and I started in elementary school plays, high school plays, college, university, theater, um, community theater, and then I moved to L.A. into the starving actress in L.A., <laughs> the waitress mostly um, in my 20s. Um, took a little break for the quote-unquote real job with a 401k and health benefits, uh, which worked for a while until I just couldn't stay awake any away anymore and uh, I came back to it a few years ago three or four years ago now just kind of started dabbling and then one thing led to another and it just kind of taken on a life of its own and I just feel like I'm in the right place at the right time with all that now and it's just I've got a lot of momentum it feels really good Um, but with the writing of film this is my first time writing and I co-wrote it with uh, another actor and friend of mine Andy Peake and he and I actually met in an acting class, and after class one night, uh, we were talking about parenting and potty training in particular. My film is about poop, about <laughs> about the, the a couple struggling to potty train their stubborn four-year-olds. Um, and we both had one kid, and I will I will let that child remain nameless. But one of my children was particularly difficult to potty train, as far as uh, and also with Andy, he had the same problem. So we were comparing notes, and he said to me, "Do you write?" And I said, sure, yeah, I write. I hadn't actually, but I figured, why not? <laughs> and we got together and we st- we started writing. And, it, and, it, and we kind of came at it um, from an improv point of view. We did a lot of, we kind of had the general structure of how we wanted the film to go. And we started just improving scenes together. And a lot of the dialogue comes fr- came from what happened in our improvs. Um, and then it was done being written and i'm a little bit of a bossy pants i said hey andy do you mind if i produce this thing and he said no by all means um but he's wonderful he he was a fantastic partner in all this um and very gracious and 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 deferring to me when necessary although for the most part we really saw eye to eye on everything which was great and i pulled together a great team of people um mostly whom i'd worked with before on other projects so i knew their work and i trusted them and i knew i liked working with them we had a great chemistry of, of cast and crew on set, and it was really, really a fantastic experience. Um, and as it turns out, I like producing. Um, it, initially, it was kind of a means to an end because I'm an actor and I just want to act, but I really like producing. So this is not the last time I'm in pre-production on a couple other projects right now. So this is a very good experience for me. Yeah, and it's, um, at least in the short term, so far, it's been pretty successful, right, as far as critique and um, your film festival showings have done? Yeah, I'm really excited about it, actually. I mean, you know, it's not your typical fester fodder. It's not any real edgy, uh, uh, current trending topics, you know. But uh, but at the end of the day, it's it's really relatable, and it's, it's a charming story. The, the kids that we have in this film, Ara and Talene McCumber, they're, they're a real-life brother and sister, are just adorable. Um, and our director, Beth Spitalny, um, who also directed Girl Clown, Crystal Scott's short film, so we had the same director, which is another <laughs> tie into that. Uh, she was wonderful with working with these kids. Um, but not only getting great performances out of the kids, but getting uh, better performances out of me and Andy. Um, you know, and I, and I, I definitely didn't want to try to tackle directing a film the first time I produced one. Um, and I, I really appreciated having her set of eyes and a more objective point of view, uh, looking at the whole big picture. She did a fantastic job. So I, a lot of credit just goes to my whole team. Heather, what is it about the topic poop 
that gets people to really relate, you know, especially among kids. Because uh, my sister just had a, a baby boy, her first one, my only sibling. And oh, congratulations, Aunt Jessie. Thank you. Um, <laughs> yes, baby uh, Cameron. Uh, we're especially obsessed with his poop. Um, yeah, yeah, it's yeah, it's it's a you, people can talk and talk and talk about about this unpleasant thing that we all do. There are books written. Everybody does do it. It's it's been documented. <laughs> um, yeah, it's crazy that we the kids giggle at it. Grown ups still find it funny. It's just and and for this, it's it it is a nice family film that kids think it's funny because it's you know it's about a kid pooping. But it, it's also it's relatable. And these these parents really are at their wits' end. And for any parent that's gone through the potty training, especially with that you know difficult child, it really is stressful. And it's like, when are they going to be done? And oh my god, I'm so tired of changing these diapers. And and it's it's really really stressful. And it can be stressful for the kid when he kind of gets a little older and realize. And some of them do realize, yeah, maybe I should be kind of doing this, but for whatever reason. And some kids just take longer than others. It's really frustrating when you're going through it. And, and, and in that moment, that is, um, a, it is very important. <laughs> <laughs> Everything revolves around your child's food schedule. Seriously. Because it's, you take it for granted, like as an adult, I don't recall learning to use, you know, to, I mean, we have a cat, so, and I think the reason we have one is because <laughs> they, they just train themselves and oh use God. the box, you know, don't have to All walk right. her, don't have to worry about it. I and love it. I'm a cat person. <laughs> yeah, that, that's the main reason I like it is because I don't have to take her out. But as a kid, I don't recall. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure my mom went through it, but it's like walking. If you think, how I'm do sure I do it was this? traumatic for it, her. It, she probably doesn't want to talk about it again. Like, she doesn't not. want to bring back yeah. those memories. Don't, just don't ask, she says. Because Cameron, our you know, our new little nephew, he can poop up his back, like up to the small of his neck. Wow, he that's a challenge. Gravity. Yeah, he, that's he, nice. He poops like vertically. I don't know how that's fantastic. <laughs> but I was watching the trailer um, for Housebroken, and yeah, I mean, like you said, with the director working with the kids, it always seems I was, I mean, it's it's wrong, but I always think that kids just, they're just saying whatever the hell they want in a movie, because it's like, how do they memorize their parts and their times and, and everything, you know, so, so great how they, they, I guess they just don't overthink it maybe like adults do yeah you know what it's great neither of these kids had ever acted before and they were actually last minute replacements we had previously cast the roles and three days before we were due to shoot um the other set of siblings that we had cast um fell through at the last minute and i said oh my gosh and somehow something in me didn't completely panic i had some friends that i had had kind of joked because their kids were the perfect age i'm like hey if these kids fall through i'm totally calling you guys and they laughed ha 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 and, you know, a week goes by or however long. And I called. I said, you know, Armin and Natalie, um, yeah, I could really use your help right now. I need to borrow your kids for a few days. And the, so these kids have never acted. These parents have never been stage parents. I was really afraid it could potentially ruin our friendship because, you know, set hours are long hours. And while you definitely um, – try to cut them down and, 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 um, work around the kids nap schedule and everything. It's still a long day for kids. And, and none of them really knew what, what was in store. Um, thankfully it went so well. They did take to it very naturally. Um, with Ara, the little one, his lines, well, he was in almost every scene. His lines were minimal. It would be like a one sentence thing that we could just give him the prompt for before we started rolling. Um, and he actually ended up ad-libbing. I had to have a really cute little bathroom scene with him where we just had a conversation and we ended up using a lot of that. He's just the cutest little thing. Um, and after a while, the kids were not aware of the cameras being around there either. They really became very comfortable. They loved that set. They loved our PAs. It was like they had someone to play with them constantly. They had a great time. It was like going to camp. Um, Talleen, uh, the older of the two, she was seven at the time. Um, she really took to it. She was naturally ad-libbing, like just throwing in her own lines in the middle of it. But uh, she, she, it was really, really fun to see them thrive in that and really enjoy it. It was a, a really positive experience all around, I think. Oh, so you might have launched two little careers right there without even realizing it. <laughs> Potentially. We'll see. I don't even know if Ara remembers it anymore. I see him every once in a while, and he kind of has a vague glimmer of recognition. <laughs> <laughs> even know if he remembers it he's gonna be embarrassed when i'll have to get like a, a huge poster 
uh, print it up for them and frame. So when he brings his first little girlfriends over to the house, his parents will have to make sure they all see that. uh, (laughs) Yeah. Um, Who's your favorite comedian actress or actor? Like, who do you kind of look up to, Heather, in terms of, you know, movie shows, you know, TV shows? Yeah, a, a comedian. I, I gotta be honest with you, I don't watch a lot of TV, and I, I do love a lot of actors. Um, a comedian actress specifically, I'd have to think about that. Um, oh gosh. So do you, do you oh, I'm like, being terrible right oh, now. No, it's okay. I was gonna go with the dramatic actresses. Oh, that's fine. Um, because I don't do a lot of comedy. Ah, um, okay. I love comedy. I just don't end up doing it that much, so I'd have to think about it. Um, I, like, I mean, Gosh, I don't know, like, like Sally Field was adorable in her day, but, like, I'm t- going way back, you know? Like, I'm trying to think, like, she's more still currently. Classic, she's well, she's still classic. Cla- yeah, yeah, she's adorable and quirky. Her. and No. Um, she still is. She's still adorable and quirky. Yeah. yeah. She still yeah. that way. The beard. Yeah. I mean, when yeah. I was younger, and it was... Lucille Ball. And yeah, like, I, go, I go Lucille back Ball, to the classic yeah. actresses, really. Um, nowadays, I laugh at a lot of... of of, uh, like Amy Schumer is hilarious, 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 yeah. hilarious, hilarious. But I couldn't necessarily emulate her because she's just all her. You know what I mean? Like she mm-hmm. is just, she is just, uh, she says what's on her mind. <laughs> and she's out there. And so like I, I, I love her and I enjoy her to pieces. But as far as like actresses, I, I, I kind of go back to a little old school. Like, yeah, like a Lucille Ball, like a, you know, and they, <laughs> mm-hmm. I, gosh, I don't know. That's really, I should be more prepared with my no, answers. That's fine. That's <laughs> fine. I mean, you know, Lucille we Ball just, is... you know, we don't, I don't know as much, we don't know as much about you. So we saw you seem comfortable, you know, in a comedy setting. We just assumed you were geared for comedy. Right. Yeah, I really love doing it. It's it's funny. I tend to do more dramatic roles. I just that's what I'm cast in. That's what I tend to go out for auditions more for. Um, and it could be just being in New York and with all the procedural shows and everything that that's mm-hmm. just the you know law of averages. And I'm just starting to get out of my network auditions really. So um, that's where my focus has been. So you say you don't watch a lot of TV. Where do you get your? I don't. Um, well, I don't either. So I don't feel bad. <laughs> but um, where do you get your like acting or like? I mean, it's hard to say. Like, I want to—I won't say motivation, but stuff you watch to get you into gear. Is it just movies or mostly film at this point? I mean, I used to watch a ton of TV. Don't get me wrong. It was—it's in, in in the irony of, of of getting back into this world of acting is that now I don't have time to watch TV because I'm, I'm you know I'm, I'm working a couple different jobs and working on multiple projects at a time. I'm a mother. I'm a wife. You know, we have other obligations, and so at the end of the day. When I come home, I'm not sitting down on the TV to relax like I used to. I'm in front of my computer updating my websites. And, you know, it's, it's, there's constantly something that needs to be done. And there's constantly something that's, I'm letting slip through the cracks. And, and so TV for me is such an indulgence. And I get a little antsy, like, oh, I should be doing something else. I should be doing. So, but a film, I can go to a movie and sit in a movie theater and, and, and watch the thing or, or even maybe put it on television, maybe. But I, I tend to fall asleep if I watch them at home. So I have to <laughs> go to a theater. <laughs> are, you into, you know, the, the, go ahead. Sorry, are you into any of the reality shows at all anything you know i that's the thing when i watched tv all the time yeah i used to be i used to oh my god the bachelor forget about uh, it oh my god <laughs> I, are you kidding me i love that show trista's wedding oh my gosh i'm like oh i want to find a man to love me like that, that was, <laughs> <laughs> i ate uh, that up but I don't watch like any of the the Jersey Housewives or Jersey Shore or like like I don't even know if that one's on anymore. I, See, I'm I terrible. Know, I don't yeah. even. <laughs> where, where they still you? they still live around me, so I kind of feel oh, like they're still on. <laughs> so I kind of bump into one at the Grove every once in a while. But oh, we have a Grove here too, by the way. Here, it's um, smaller. <laughs> HGTV fanatics, I guess. Yeah, so we're into HGTV. Tiny, anything, even though none of us have oh, any yeah, carpentry like, experience. It's all house yes, building. yes, like the redecorating the houses. Yeah. I totally yeah. do. I actually, see, that's something when I'm like getting in bed, I, I don't mind having that on. I, I, I like those home makeover shows. Tiny like the, the flip, that's... flip this house. or oh, yeah, 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 that's yeah, yeah. yeah. Tiny house fascinates <laughs> me. It's like a family of four and they want to move it to 150 square feet. Yeah, I've never seen that show. That it confuses me. I <laughs> Once you start, you won't be able to stop watching it. Cause really? It's... Well, being from the East Coast, maybe it won't be as bad. Because I don't know if you're like apartment living experience, if you had any in New York. But you know, no, you consider, I live uh, in a very suburban uh, Norman Rockwell little town yeah. in a split level. Nah, anybody who lives in Manhattan, 
can tell you like those houses aren't small compared to what they're used to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I, I have a lot of friends that do the apartment thing in oh. in the city, and yeah, they definitely get creative with their storage space. Do you find um like uh, ever since this um you know your film House Broken has come out, do you find moms or younger you know or, or other women asking you for tips like uh housebreaking tips stuff like that? They think you're an expert now since you're. <laughs> Well, I don't know if they think I'm an expert because I'm not going to let you know how the film ends, oh, okay. but I definitely didn't handle it very well throughout. Um, <laughs> um, you know what I found actually, um, and through making this film, is I've uh, come to get to know a lot of other mom filmmakers, which has been really rewarding. Um, there's a Facebook group, group Moms in Film. Um, I was asked to take part in a screening um, to launch another uh a film sleep training another short film that was uh actually the sleep training was actually really cool it was done all in one shot like uh kind of like birdman <laughs> um and that was another cool short film done by another mom um and i just i love it, it's a really nice supportive community i just i love when women are getting each other's back and building each other up and especially with the moms in film there are more and more of us um, so really, that's the cool um, connection that I think has come out of producing this, this film, or one of them at least. Yeah, that's been a theme, I guess, our last few episodes is yeah. just the women in film. I guess ever since, uh, I want to say Crystal Scott was the first one with Girl Clown, mm -hmm. and then uh, Hunter Drago for uh, To the New Girl, and it was like all female produced. So I think it's still being produced, actually. She just got a okay. Kickstarter. Uh, so, and then we have you. I think that's actually how we awesome. found it. Was probably through Crystal. Through Crystal, yeah, it was through yeah. Crystal. So that's, um, we were trying to get that team going just to get the the recognition out there because I don't know why it's so much harder, but you know. Yeah, it's so hard like for you guys, things, man. Like <laughs> well, we're juggling. We're juggling a lot, you know. It's uh, it's it's you know, it's like anything else, you know. It definitely, it, women are a little bit delayed in in. Um, in you know you know they're not making as much they're not offered as many jobs and there are all these statistics that that show that and and we live that um it, but it does feel like there's kind of it's kind of a renaissance i do feel like women are kind of this is this is our time and and we're and and i'm a feminist not in the sense that i'm uh, against men but just that, you know everyone should be equal and i'm kind of feeling like there's there's definitely a, a an uh, an upswell of, of that sentiment, which feels really good and it feels really sincere and um, and yeah, it's it's a, it's a good time to be a woman in film. I feel really great. Like I said, you know, when I was young and in my twenties and waiting tables, it just wasn't my time. Now is my time, and I feel really good about that. Um, well, while we're on the women in film theme, what is, what is your take on the uh, Ghostbusters remake? Okay. I'm going to be honest with you, I it, loved so. it. Oh, I saw, dragged my 14-year-old son and my husband to go see it, and I really, really enjoyed it. And I loved the first one, so I'm always skeptical when they do a remake, you know. But they really, you know, they clearly the, the, the themes and then the story structure was very similar, but it was also very original in its own right, too, um, just with the, the, the spin that they had on it. And it was... It was nice seeing these these smart women. They they didn't they weren't sexualized women. They were you know what I mean. It wasn't. It, it was just it was a really funny movie that that these women you know weren't relying on on typical women's shtick to to make it funny. And and I really appreciated that. Um, yeah, I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. How funny is Melissa McCarthy? Oh my gosh. Okay, so there's another comedian that I can say that she's, she is on a roll. See, these are the women like they are so funny, but like I'm. I don't know. Sometimes I just I bite my lip too much, so like to be that like body or that much. You know what I mean? Like I'm I'm there. I yeah. <laughs> I, I I admire that and I appreciate that and I thank God they're in the world because I thoroughly thoroughly enjoy that. Um, so yeah, I really it was a great movie. And what was the other woman whose name is escaping me? She played the quirky one, and I had never seen her in uh... anything before. Yeah. yeah, the blonde is my um, favorite. The blonde she's is stinking hilarious, and she had like this funny. understated way about her that she she just yeah. oh she was great. She is great. She is. I it's think it's very is. hard to find that movie. We're in um, just out of, outside of San Francisco, and we're in Marin it's County. It's so hard to find. It's it. so hard. Okay, it's like wants playing to at ten p.m. in one. Place. Really? Oh yeah. yeah. Well, it, it was out like a while ago well, though. Even so when it was. It just it got all this negative really? publicity for no reason. Oh, really? Yes. And then it just oh, it's Kate McKinnon. Kate McKinney. 
Katie. Yes. Yes. Now, so. now I'm on IMDb now. I'm just yeah. I'm just gonna stalk Leslie her on Jones. IMDb. Let's see what else she was in. Uh, let's see. Um, there she, she is. So oh, look, she's really cute. I have Saturday seen her Live. in something else. Oh, I don't Live. watch that. She see, I don't watch, I don't watch in, TV oh, she anymore. Was in Sisters. I don't know which character she played. Didn't see she it. In I'm the big terrible. Well, show. She was in Ted 2. I saw Ted 1. She was a bird in, uh, <laughs> what kind of actor am I? I'm like, nope, haven't seen it. No, no. And no Angry idea Birds, what you're talking about. Angry Birds movie, she was a bird. <laughs> you have an excuse. You have a legit excuse, all right? You have like 16 titles into one rolled into well, she was one. Okay. sketch comedy before any, any movies. That's fine. Yeah, yeah. She's yeah, great. UCB. Yeah, I see that. Wait, so but what yeah, did your 14-year-old say about the movie? What was his? Story? He really liked it. He thought it was really funny. I, I I have to drag them to see a movie. I dragged them out to see Pete's Dragon the other night. Nobody wanted to see it. Of course, everybody loved it. My daughter was sobbing, like her face at the end of it was like wow. totally swollen and red. She was just, it was a really sweet movie. I enjoyed that one. I mean, not in the same way I enjoyed Ghostbusters, but oh. I still enjoyed it. <laughs> saw, uh, Kubo and the Two Strings. That's really good. Kubo. Oh, was that good? It was yeah. really good. If you yeah, can, very... I don't know if you'll be able to drag right. them to see it. Very artsy. Yeah, oh, I want to see it. Very funny. Funny, movie. very witty, yeah. funny. Like, Small cast. Cool. It's like a capsule film. I guess it's just like a yeah. three of them on a you know on a, a quest, I guess is the way to put it. It's not, okay. a very, not a very large cast in the movie, but no, it's No, it's really not very good. long either. So um, it's not really okay. long. By these standards, yeah, it's about an hour and 40 minutes. Maybe. Not long. Oh, wow, yeah. Wait, yeah. Okay, yeah, I can I can fit that into my schedule. <laughs> but no, it's definitely <laughs> worth uh, it's definitely worth seeing. Uh, what 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 is your goal, Heather? I mean, what what are you looking to do? Are you looking to combine everything eventually, or you just want to keep branching and branching and growing and see where yeah, it goes? Yeah, you know, it's kind of fun. I do, I do, I ultimately my goal is to be a series regular on a network TV show and have a little bit of time from time to time to do film. I just I love film, but there's something alluring about just having a regular job. Just keep I. I think, and having a character arc that, that changes through the seasons, I think that's really neat. And I'd really love to the oppor- have the opportunity to play with something like that. Um, so that's, 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 let, let's just say that's a five year plan. Um, but in the meantime, I'm going to keep on. I've been doing a lot of commercial work actually, which is great. It pays better than independent film, but I love, love, love independent film. I do love producing, but again, that's more of a means to an end. So I will produce films that I'm in um, and that I really, really believe in. Uh, but it, it's, it's all good. I'm just kind of following my gut right now and it's, it seems to be leading me in good direction. So, oh, and I just bought a ukulele. I'm learning to play the ukulele. Oh, so there's that. Oh, there you go. The <laughs> and... Is that guy Joe Johnson? Is that his name? The, the guy that sits on the beach and just writes those songs. Jack Johnson. Jack Johnson. Yeah. Jack Johnson. <laughs> there you go. Yes, exactly. All right. Well, before we, we know you're awesome. Like you, said, you just need a beach good. house studio. I do. Oh, yes. Jersey Shore. Jersey Shore studio. Yeah, I can. Yeah. I can kind of. I can ride my bike. I'll. I'll put it in my basket yeah. on my bike and I'll so ride great. down to the beach. That's so great that you pick a very unique instrument. <laughs> I wanted I to play like an that. instrument. I'm like, you know, you want to know who inspired me to do that too? It's the most random thing. So I was at the show. This this. Um, a fundraiser for a local theater here, the Algonquin Theater, and Tony Danza was the headliner of the show. And he, I, have, I don't know if you know this, but he's like a song and dance guy. He gets up. Yeah, yeah, I know that. Yeah, yeah. Ta- tap, jam. soft shoe. He's a hell he of a sings. tap guy. Yeah, yeah, he sings and he tells stories. He's a great storyteller. So he, he has this whole show and it was really, really enjoyable. But at one point, he, he's uh, telling us about how he has his days of the week calendar. And, uh, and, uh, you know, every day there was like a different thing, like a, a suggestion for something you could do that day or with your life or whatever. And one day it said, buy a ukulele, learn a different chord every day for a month. And at the end of the month, you'll learn to play the ukulele. And he said, so I did. And then he takes out the ukulele and he starts playing a little song. And I said, oh, I'm going to do that. And so, and so I did, although I haven't learned a different chord every day. I think I've learned like two chords in the last two weeks, but I'm rocking row your boat right now there you go and uh hey you know have you ever heard dare of, to dream have you ever heard of overheard.com no it's a website where they write down anything you overheard someone saying or where you were somewhere in particular like an office or the beach or wherever and okay. somebody was in the park and they overheard someone go I think Tony Danza just went skating by me. And then Tony Danza skates back and goes, that was, that was me. It is me. <laughs> <laughs> that was so 
Oh, that's right. great. Yeah, it's an anonymous quote site. Yeah, it was an anonymous quote fun. site. And you just, All right, well, um, before yeah. we let you roll, you know yeah. you're a very busy woman, okay. we're going to put you through our stolen 10 questions of doom, as we call them. Oh, doom, no. Doom, doom, doom. Okay, All okay. Right. So we will go in uh, order. I don't know if you're a big fan of the, well, I, I'm assuming every actor The actor is, studio. But, yeah, no, I love, love, love that okay. show. But I didn't brush up on the questions, so uh, I might be okay. caught off guard by a couple, but no go worry. for they, it. They seem like they're pretty <laughs> straightforward, but I don't know. I've never been But the most straightforward questions 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 the ones that my blind goes my mind goes blank Uh, on but go for it all right here we go (laughs) number one what is your favorite word serenity ah there you go good one uh what is your least favorite word can't ah good one again look at that what turns you on creatively, spiritually, or emotionally? She's trying to do the guy's voice. Oh, I love it. Okay. Um, ah, gosh. Just making a new friend, like like really clicking with someone um, spiritually, creatively, emotionally. Like uh, just when you have a certain energy with someone and you just like hit it off right away, like that fires me up. I don't know. Like just connecting with other people in that way gets me really excited. Does that make sense? Is that cheesy? No, no, no. <laughs> what turns you off? <laughs> what turns me off? Um, people that are name callers. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, what is your favorite curse word? Fuck. There you go. I think that's. Is that everyone's favorite yeah. curse word? Does anyone ever say anything different? That's like um, that's the, the, yeah, I try not yeah. to use it too often, but when you're really mad. I just yeah. There's so many ways to say it. Like, <laughs> yeah. You know, you can really like hang on the f or just Samuel yeah. Jackson style. Fuckity fuck fuck. Yeah, exactly. I do that sometimes. I, I, like I that do too. that. Yeah, yeah. Or, yeah. Or just throw it in with any word that rhymes. You know, you fucking yeah. fuck truck. Go fuck a duck. Call it a. You know, <laughs> yeah, I just I just match it with it, whatever comes to mind. But um, um, all right, uh, what sound or noise do you love? Sound or noise? Uh, I don't know. Right now, I hear the cicadas outside. That's a pretty nice noise this time of year. You know, it only happens during the summer here. Um, so that's a nice noise. And uh, the sound of crashing waves. But like at night when everything's really quiet. What soothing. sound or noise do you hate? <laughs> My child whining. <laughs> God, shut up! Mommy's busy. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> again, why I have a cat. I have a cat. Um, what profession other than your own would you like to attempt aside from ukulele player? I was thinking ukulele. <laughs> um. Hmm. I don't know. Maybe some kind of decorating, home decorating. I like that. That's fun for me. I don't know if I'd want to attempt it as a profession, but I, that's the first thing that comes to my mind because I like doing that. Um, so maybe that. Or what? shopping. Is it? Can I be a professional shopper? Like yeah, clothing? Yeah, yeah. That, yeah. Kind of professional. <laughs> what profession would you not like to do? Yeah. Uh. I uh, I wouldn't want to work at like um somewhere where people get impatient. Like I wouldn't want to work a counter where people are mad, like a customer service desk at like at like an like an airport. I think I'd probably have a lot of angry people coming to me, and at the end of the day, I'd probably leave a little bit angry, like taking absorbing all those angry energies. I wouldn't want to work somewhere where people are coming to complain to me all the time. Yeah. No, I've done that. And that's not, I, you know, that's mostly a good experience. But when you're like at the customer service and the flights derailed or whatever, and oh my God, yeah, all those angry people. Speak to you any way they want. That's the problem. Yeah. I can't, I wouldn't be able to deal with it. All right. Well, the yeah. last question. Um, let's see. If the afterlife exists, what would you like to hear God or his equivalent or her say when you arrive at the pearly gates? You did good. Ah, good answer. See, mine was, what are you doing here? (laughs) (laughs) At the wrong door, buddy. That's what my kids said. That is sweet. That is very sweet. 
All right. Well, see, you didn't do so bad. You didn't do bad, Heather. (laughs) Oh, thanks. I did good. (laughs) There you go. You did good. You've been talking to God all this time. (laughs) Little did he know that he sounds like a nine-year-old boy. Yeah. Uh, Tony Danza would have done better, but we we had to start. Well, he's 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 had more practice at these things. Yeah, Tony. (laughs) I've I've never heard anything bad about him. He's like you know for Hollywood types, everybody loves that guy. Not that there's anything about that, but. He's just a genuinely happy guy. I think that's what it is. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, on that note, before we um, let you go, why don't you let everybody know where they can find you and your film online? Oh, well, find me at Heather O'Scanlan on Twitter and Instagram and Facebook. And my film, housebrokenfilm.com, hashtag housebrokenfilm. And on Twitter, it's... uh, Pepper won't poo. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. House so Broken Film was already taken, so I... <laughs> oh, yeah. I, when I tried to look it up. I think it's a Danny DeVito movie or something like that. House... Yeah, so I was like, Jared, there are like several of them and several variations, so uh-huh. I'm like, Pepper won't poo. Oh, well, whatever. Okay. But hashtag House Broken Film. That could be the sequel. Pepper still mm-hmm. won't poop. <laughs> <laughs> People talk about sequels. I honestly think I'm done with, with poop. I mean, it was good and all, but I'm ready to move on. Yeah. I mean, the topic itself, I could see that being a... a like, a, a, people have talked to me about doing film. some kind of web series out of it or yeah. something, like uh, installments. I'm like, no, really, so I don't young need moms you. out there and Hey, just, if like, YouTube struggling. wants to put something out for you, Heather, you let them. Yeah, right. Right. Okay, okay. Yeah, right. I will I will let them. Right. They can do whatever money, they want. Money in the bank. There's so many money moms in the bank, Heather. They're a little uncooperative yeah. poop machines. <laughs> Especially what passes for a YouTube channel these days. You well, know what I mean? Like, like our own, for that's example. true. So. Now, well, now. Well, thank you for giving us. I know you have uh, your time is precious, especially these days. So, yeah. Well, yours as well. I'm glad we finally were able to uh, link up yeah. and do this. It's good uh, talking to you both. That's right. No, you enjoyed it. And um, I guess you could get us. We're uh, at Pan Podcast on uh, Twitter. Uh, Pan uh, Facebook.com slash Pan Podcast, SoundCloud, blah, blah, blah. You get it. You get it. Whatever. Let's That's go right. on. That's right. You can find us. You said it's at Heather O'Scanlan. It's uh, at housebrokenfilm.com is what you said, I believe. Oh, w- just housebrokenfilm.com. Housebrokenfilm.com. The, the, the website is that, yeah. yeah. And, and all the links to my social media are on that, too. Okay. So you can yeah. just click and, links. You know, make sure you go check out the trailer. And, um, and when – is it available to, like, get – like buy or purchase or see yet? Or Not it? yet. Um, I'll probably do some kind of online release after I feel like the festival run is is complete. So we've been at this for about four months now. Mm-hmm. So I, I, I probably want to give it a full year. So probably sometime next April we'll do some kind of online release. So oh, we'll good. be looking okay. for that then. But in the meantime, the trailer is up. And the next couple festivals we're at are the Boardwalk Film Festival in Asbury Park mm-hmm. on, I think, the September... I know, I'm still talking. See, so you say goodbye, and I'm still talking. No, okay. September 17th, and on the 24th, we're going to be at the Golden Door Film Festival in Jersey oh. City. Um, we're looking forward to that. So, okay, yeah. Great. Oh, good right. news. All right, well, then. thanks again. Bye, yeah, thanks. thanks. Thank you. Well, that, uh, that was our interview with Heather O'Scanlan, a great guest. Hopefully you guys catch her film uh, when she does release it for you know general consumption, House Broken. Right, right now you can get the trailer on YouTube. It's a pretty, and I was telling her when we started, I thought it was a full-length movie, just judging by the trailer, you know, the quality of it and everything. Not that a, a short film is any worse, but I didn't realize it was a short film until she told me. I like the idea of short film. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, the concept is, there's a point, plot, climax. Yeah, I think she said it's about 16 minutes long, so, um... I think it's more of like a uh, digital resume or movie resume for them. They show you, you know, how they direct, how they write, how they produce, and that helps them get the the bigger, you know, parts and or offers. You know, I, I would go to the movies just to see like an hour. Well, they have those. They have those those film festivals where it's like more than one movie. Two I'm or three saying, but normally to go to the movies and somebody gave like a string of short films, I would be into yeah, it. That's what they do. It's at the film festival. No, but not a film festival, like a regular movie theater. I don't know. I just don't know if people are willing to pay for that. That's the problem. I don't know. The price is always an issue because how much is it now? Um, Out here, about, I don't know, 13 14 bucks for non-3D. If you don't catch a matinee, I think. We always do because we're cheap. Um, we're not cheap, just inexpensive. Jesus Christ. Anyway. <laughs>
Maybe we should start dressing up like old people. Speaking of expensive things, um, we watched UFC 202 this weekend. Managed to save money by going to a meetup at um, Jack London Square. Very nice. Yeah, Very it was nice. nice. I mean, mm -hmm. they had it up on a projector, which I have at home, so I was like, bah, I could do this at home. But otherwise, it's nice to Pretty see food. it with a crowd. Yeah, yeah, it's nice to see it with a crowd sometimes. The main event was... Uh, Conor McGregor and Nate Diaz. Yeah, Conor McGregor. It's Conor McGregor. Well, Conor to popular, contrary to popular belief, Nate Diaz did not whoop his ass and choke him out again because it turned out Nate went into the fight with two injuries, which he didn't disclose, but um, I think it was a rib injury and a knee injury. So everybody was wondering, why didn't he just take Conor down in the third round when he was beating him like a drum? And it's because he couldn't bend that leg or really exert himself for the lift. So Could he have technically... I have a question. Mm -hmm. Could he have technically... Because he was injured, delayed the fight? Well, yeah, he could have pulled out, but that that happens. I mean, it's not McGregor's fault, but it seems to happen to him all the time. People are always getting hurt before his fights. So if you're Nate, you don't want that to happen because you know you're never going to hear the end of it from there. You know? But even then, injured and whatnot, he, I think he ended up in worse shape than he was for the last fight. We only had 10 days notice because for the last two weeks of his camp, he couldn't do sit-ups. He couldn't jog. Couldn't run. That's what I'm saying. Like, his state of mind was... Yeah, but he still went out there and almost... His problem was he didn't finish the fight, and then somehow not one of those three blind mice judges gave him the fight. Two of them gave it to McGregor, and one made it a draw. And anybody with eyes can see that, you know. I mean, I don't know. I guess they're giving McGregor round two, which the second half of round two he was losing. So at the worst case, he definitely won round one. Can't take yeah, it. One Connor came in with a game plan, but he just ran out of gas again. In round two, he was sucking wind. By the end of that round, Nate was beating the shit out of him. And in the third round, they beat the crap out of him for the whole round. Some people, for whatever reason, gave Connor round four. I don't know why. I didn't were, give him round four. And then round five was Nate's. So Nate should have won three out of five. Somehow didn't win any in any judge's eyes, or not enough to, to win the fight. And then one judge had it a draw. So um, Nate loses by decision. And once it went to decision, I mean, not to sound like I'm a swami or something, but I was like, it's he's not going to win. It's either going to be a draw. Or McGregor's going to win because they, they won three fights out of this. Watching McGregor, technically speaking, is boring. Well, he was just running away a lot. I mean, he's fighting a bigger guy, taller guy. But yeah, but I'm saying, it was like literally, Nate's like, get over here. And he well, that's like, the thing, yeah. But that, see, instead of doing that, so though, Nate should have just been chasing his ass and, and, and hitting him. I but mean, I know he, wanted insane, to, yeah. he was pointing out how he was running away from him, but you don't get points for that. Actually, you should get points taken away for running away from somebody. I think overall... This was a very disappointing fight. Oh, no, I liked the fight. It was very tense. It's very disappointing, though, babe. Well, it's disappointing because judges suck. But That's what I mean. Dana That's White I always says, speaking. don't leave it to the judges. Very disappointing. He says it on the wall of the Ultimate Fighter like center that they use for the fights, right above the door. Don't leave it to the freaking... He even gives you bonuses mm -hmm. to knock someone out because... You never know what the hell the judge sees. You know? What the hell judges see? Judge, can you call in and just tell yeah. us what you saw? Because why didn't yeah, you see what they don't. They, they see dollar signs. That's what they see. But, yeah, seriously. I mean, there is there is an argument for it to be a draw. But I don't see how there's an argument for Connor to win the fight. Although, one of the funniest things we did see at that meetup was when that one chick who fights from the same gym as... Uh, yeah, there was a lady there that went to... The Stockton Stockton's. school, you know, the Diaz brothers' school. And so she, she just, changed with them, yeah. Yeah, she was pacing the whole she time. She literally took her chair and put it to the side and was crouching on the floor, covering her eyes at one point. Yeah, in that case, don't go. You know, watch it or not. You know, shit. But It is funny. Yeah, the crowd where we were was mostly pro-Diaz. There was a couple of guys in the back cheering mm -hmm. for Connor, but even they were like, ah, uh, you know, they, they couldn't. They were surprised he won, too. So. But in the end, it's a win. It's in the books. So now there's, if, when, when they do the third fight, it'll be at 155 pounds. And I don't know why people are like, oh, yeah, let's see it now. That's the, the weight Nate always fights at. It's 155. He's only had, counting this one now, I think three welterweight fights. He won the Ultimate Fighter, I believe, at 155. So it's, I don't think that's a better thing for McGregor. You know? It's really not. And he already showed, despite all this weight and all the shots he landed on Nate, he couldn't knock him out. Couldn't take him down. No, he anything, down he looked more times. out of breath. He's just like... <laughs> well, he's carrying more weight. He <laughs> said himself, he misses having abs. You know, from, but, I mean, but 170 is not the weight for him. But So he'll definitely have more stamina at 155 if they fight at that weight. Notice he didn't mention, well, Nate can't get down to 145. I don't know if I could watch a third fight, huh? Oh, I want to watch a third one just to see Nate beat him and shut his ass up once and for all. But he's got to go and fight Aldo now. And if you're Aldo watching this fight, it's hard to really gauge because you're not fighting McGregor at the same weight. But Aldo didn't get a chance to do anything. He got knocked out in 10 seconds last time, 13 seconds. And I don't think that's 
like a representation of what he could really do. Speaking of getting knocked out in 13 seconds, Anthony Rumble Johnson knocked Glover Teixeira into the future. With an oh, uppercut. my God. I think he just landed now. He was trying to wrestle the referee while he was half awake. That was one of the most brutal punches I've ever seen. He, he hit, hit him so hard. I think he almost like pushed his mouthpiece through the side yeah. of his mouth. Yeah, a little. It yeah. just, it did like this, <laughs> just like you a cartoon. Know, like you it don't just... get paid by the hour, man. Rumble went in there, fucking holy shit. And he called uh, Daniel Cormier and, you know, respectfully, but still said, hey, you know, I want you next. But on that front, we also have the possible earlier than we expected return of John Jones. And Daniel Cormier can't be happy about that. Hi, John. Yeah. I mean, I know some, a lot of people don't like John. Oh, he's unprofessional. Uh, John, speaking of John, and what was he called out for? Well, he, he um, initially failed for a estrogen blocker. So everybody assumed that's something, because it is something you take at the end of a steroid cycle. So they're like, oh, he was doing steroids. It turned out, at least this is what he says, he was taking a generic form of Cialis. And that is also an estrogen blocker. And that's why he failed. Or he could have just went online and looked up what has estrogen blockers in it, and that was something that fit the bill, and you could say he was taking that. But then again, you got to prove that it's not like you could buy it in a store, so he has to prove it with prescriptions. You know, I was thinking about, like, John Jones doing a Cialis commercial. How well, great would that shit, be? Shit, he would be, man. But he, um, I, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, why, people say, well, why would he need that? Some people take it as a party drug just to have it. Yeah. Some people, uh, I know he's done cocaine before. He claims only once, but yeah. if he had a bad habit, that also, you know, yeah. takes the uh, lead out of your pencil, as they say. So, you never know. But Come on, but think about it. John Jones and Cialis commercials. Right, right. That's, that's a big money business. Yeah, Viagra and Cialis commercials. Why not? I would do it if I was him. He would just knock out the camera. Like he still needs any money. I mean, well, he lost about $10 million by missing UFC 200. $10 million? He potentially could have made $10 million bucks. I think he could have made more. No, that's a lot of money for fighters. I need $10 million. For still one, one night? Yeah, that's what a percentage of what Brock is losing for failing his drug test. And uh, he's probably banned. He, I don't think he cares. But I think he just wanted to go in and win and leave knowing he won his fight. I don't think he really... Wait, what did he get caught for? The same thing, I believe, as uh, John Jones, oh. an estrogen blocker. Oh, I think he got two things. Well, Jones had two things. I don't know what the other thing was. Speaking of drugs, then we have Eva Marie. Oh, yeah. Um, well, <laughs> speaking of failures, yeah, Eva Marie, I don't know what she failed for yet in the WWE. They say Adderall. Remember was that what Adderall. They said? Mm-hmm. No, I thought that was that was what Roman Reigns failed for. No, she failed Adderall, too. Oh, she well, was just talking there you about go. But people that take that and they didn't know that it's, it, well, it is an amphetamine, and I guess that fits into WWE's is more like a wellness thing. It's not like the UFC where it's performance-enhancing drug-based. So if she took that, then, yeah, she's going to fail because Roman Reigns just failed for that. And then there's um, well, Paige yeah, and Alberto Paige. Del Rio. I don't know what they failed for. Might be the same thing. Maybe these people just can't focus because they're on the road 300 days a year. That's so they take some Adderall to help them, you know, zoom in on whatever it is they're doing that night. <sighs> Either that or it's a sexually transmitted wellness policy evaluate, violation. Sexually by transmitted for Alberto. Come on. Oh, that's his girl. Paige is his girl. So, you know, gave it a little Alberto. And next thing you know, they both fail a, a wellness violation. I don't know, all at the I same party. Page, I don't know. Page is one big uh, party. I don't know. Bro. Speaking of WWE, Finn Balor, Balor uh, injured his shoulder last night against Seth Rollins. Last night being SummerSlam, and uh, Seth Rollins has this move, a power bomb, where he takes you and tosses you, so you can't see where you're landing. Usually, it's into the turnbuckle, and if he reaches, it's not that bad. But um, in this case, it was into the barrier outside the ring, which, contrary to some idiots online, they do not teach you how to do in pro wrestling school. So Balor stuck his arm out because he wasn't sure where the fuck he was going. Turned out, he, and he tore his shoulder or popped his shoulder out of place. Ouch. And, and this was like maybe five minutes into the match. That motherfucker put his shoulder back into place and finished the match. And during that match, Bal um, Rollins used the same move again. So I don't know if Balor ever told him, hey, my shoulder popped out. And did what they call the buckle bomb because you throw him into the corner. But again, you don't see where you're going, and Rollins didn't reach, like, Balor didn't reach the turnbuckle. He ended up smacking the back of his head, like, on the middle turnbuckle. Oh, my God. And um, that's what, that's the move that injured Sting as well. When oh he hit the buckle, his head, his head snapped back, and he injured a vertebrae in his neck. So I think uh, he might not be seeing that move very much anymore, because it's just... How's he doing now? I mean, it's... Sting is, like, he had the surgery, he's fine. Um, Balor <laughs> evaluated, and it, I think it's a torn labrum. So you're, the guy just was made the Universal Champion for a reason, because they were planning on, and now he's out for maybe six months. 
Because, I mean, I have two bad shoulders, and I'm not even in shape. So that guy, not only you got to get the shoulder back into shape, which is super hard. Randy Orton was out for nine months for a shoulder problem. <sighs> and then you got to get back into just condition in general. I mean, he's young, Balor. I don't think he's under 30 years old. I might be wrong, but that still sucks for him. And he finally made it up until Raw after two years in NXT, and then he gets hurt the night that he wins the belt. <sighs> you know, poor guy. So hopefully Speedy recovered him. You don't blame Seth because, I mean, he does that move every night to people, but it's just a move you don't need to do. It's not even a move that he wins a match with. You know, come up with something else. Your opponent, your partner in the ring cannot see where they're going to land. And people, he's got these jackasses online saying, oh, it's his own fault for sticking his arm out. Shut the fuck up. Do you know anything about anything? I mean, if you're falling backwards, it's natural. They tell you in karate school and mixed martial arts not to stick your arm out because you're going to break your arm uh, when you're just falling on your back. When you're flying through the fucking air and can't tell where the hell you're going, yeah, your instinct is going to be to stick your arm out. So all these armchair wrestling experts, you could go eat a dick because you do not know what you're talking about. Sorry, it's the end of that rant. Um, um, on a happier note, what do we see? What, Kubo? Um, and, huh? I can't hear you from there. No, I know. I was just trying to remember what I was going to say, but then you started the rant, so I forgot. <laughs> but let's go on Kubo. Welcome to my Kubo was yeah. okay. Yeah, Kubo and the two strings. Kubo was fun. Yeah, it was a fun movie. Funny. I was telling him I needed to see a funny movie. I'm seeing way too many action hero, superhero movies. Not that it's bad. I just needed some kind of funniness. Mm. It turned mm. out to be witty. Trying to see Ghostbusters is just not playing out here. Sucks. I mean, it's been out for about a month now. So, But even then, when it wasn't, it was still hard to find. Yeah, it was, man. Well, there's just a, these people get into this habit now of bombing a movie before it even comes out. And... Uh, People are like sheep, and they just don't go to see it instead of seeing it for themselves. Granted, you don't want to waste $15 and find out a movie sucks, but don't go by what other people are telling you. But go Rotten Tomatoes. Rotten Tomatoes is not a site. It's an aggregator. It takes critics from all these other sites. <laughs> and the, people had a 40,000-person petition because Rotten Tomatoes gave Suicide Squad a 26% rating or something. So yeah. they wanted to shut down Rotten Tomatoes. Like, are you a moron? That's They don't give the rating. They just... Add up everybody else's rating. It's not even a day. It's a program. We haven't seen Suicide Squad. I don't know if we will. I think we will. Eh. Unless you want to go see it and tell me about it. No, uh, I'm not really... I mean, I'm not a big DC Comics fan, and I think the driving force behind that movie is all the Harley Quinn fans and Joker fans, even though the guy that played the Joker, Jared Leto, is fucking miserable. He hated it. Not making the movie, but the fact that he wasn't featured more in it. Somebody was like, hello, it's not Joker Squad, Suicide Squad. You're there as part of Harley's backstory, not the star of the movie. You know? Obviously. But Jared did not buy that. So now he's trying to willingly like break his contract with Warner Brothers by Instagramming pictures of him rock climbing when rock climbing is like, forbidden in his contract with them because he, you know, you can hurt yourself. Very mature man, that Jared Leto. Yeah. Well, any idiot that tries to method act as a Joker... Can't be that smart to begin with. I don't like, know. He just he was never one of the smart ones. I don't know. He let that whole Dallas Buyers Club thing get to his head. No, I am Mr. Serious Actor. No, you're not. He always wanted to be known as a serious actor, huh? I know, but method acting is very odd. I don't think it's enjoyable for anybody that's on the set with you. Yeah. You know? But like Will Smith said, while he was on the set of Suicide Squad, he never spoke to Jared Leto. He was too busy being the Joker 24 hours a day. Mind you, the Joker is a homicidal serial killer. How the hell do you method act as that? Okay. Well, he did his best. Oh, I don't know. I haven't heard that say that his performance as a Joker was bad or anything. You just see him for about ten minutes total on really? the screen. Yeah, he's not there to be, you know. But the trailers made it seem like he's a bigger deal, and that's the problem. The trailers played it out like it's it's action comedy. It wasn't that funny, and uh, that the Joker's got this big role, and he doesn't. And that's where people are complaining. That's where he's complaining. He said he shot enough Joker scenes to make a movie himself, practically. But, you know, hey, got paid the same amount of money. I Shut up. And, I mean, it's money. setting him up as a character for future movies. There's a Batman standalone movie coming up, which you would assume he probably would have been in. But now it doesn't sound like he wants to be the Joker again. Mm -hmm. so, ben Affleck's uh, run of bad luck continues. Okay. Although he was in Suicide Squad. Uh, briefly. So is the Flash. Spoiler alert. I, guess I should have said spoiler alert before that. Who cares? 
What else? Uh, I think that's... Oh, um, Jesse still does not play Pokemon Go. Contrary to it being the most popular mobile game out there. I mean, don't get me wrong. Uh, I, uh, I see it everywhere, you know, more than ever. And wherever I go, someone's talking about it. And I recently got a part-time gig and sat in their office and there was a Pokemon cardboard cutout and it was a contest going on and one of the managers was like yeah it's really big here and I'm looking at him like yeah that's an understatement might as well take a picture and show it to my husband well they had an update now when you turn on the Pokemon game it says do not enter dangerous areas when playing Pokemon Go do not trespass when playing Pokemon Go don't play Pokemon Go while driving these are all designed for the idiots out there the last few weeks that have been doing all three of those things. So, in an attempt to protect themselves from lawsuits, Niantic, if I pronounced that correctly, creators of Pokemon Go have to put all these warnings because people are dumb. You do not need to try, climb a tree to catch a Pokemon in Pokemon Go. You don't need to hop over a fence. All you gotta do is tap the little bastard on your phone. Or in my case, a Zubat, because that's all I ever get by our house is freaking bats. Well, we should get a spiders, because our house is, like, overrun by them. Yeah, the spider situation here is... But um, a tip bad. for Pokemon players, go out into the middle of nowhere and light an incense. Because I take a ferry home from work. Tough life, yes, I know. But in the middle of the bay, if I light an incense, it's freaking Pikachu City. Because the system doesn't have a regular Pokemon for the area, so they just start sending you anything. So that's how I got a, got a Pikachu. I got some weird thing that just looks like a ball. A Volt Orb? I don't know what the hell that is. A War Turtle? A Drowsy? A Shelter? A Shelter? A Magnemite? That was all on one trip home from work. I continue to get taunted by Squirtle, which never appears, so I'm never going to evolve him. And then uh, Charmander. It's always on the Golden Gate Bridge, in case you guys are wondering. Geodude. I got a Vulpix. Yeah, this was all on one, one day on the way home from work. And uh, some weird, like, pony that's on fire or something like that. Uh, I have the Tauros. He's exclusive to North America. I have, well, I don't know what I named, what it was before, but we have one named the Jesse Fly, named after Jesse. Guys, I'm named with a fly. Yeah. Uh, gotta name one after Nala. Gotta find out. I don't know. Oh, yeah, Meowth is the, the cat from Team Rocket. Is that what it was called? I never watched the cartoon. Yes. Yeah, I have a Meowth somewhere. Um, yeah, I even evolved a Magikarp. It took like 300 of them. But, anyway, any out there, listeners out there, feel free to tweet at Pan Podcast. Let us know what Pokemons you have. Yeah, go ahead. Share away, Mark. Go the ahead, uh, Facebook group mysteriously disappeared. It was a Pokemon Go global group, and it just vanished all of a sudden. That's a little weird. Yeah, and that or they kicked me out for some reason. I don't see why. I didn't do anything. So. But when I try to search for it, it's not there anymore. There's a Pokemon Go San Francisco group on Facebook. They recently had a meetup, and they weren't all weird-looking freaks like uh, we surmised they would be. It's normal people. Why didn't we go? I don't know. I just found it the other day. It wasn't even a meetup. It was just part of that group on Facebook. They posted a picture of it. Good going. Mm -hmm. Here it is. See? Pokemon Go San Francisco. They have one point, almost 2,000 members. And these people are really uh, serious about their Pokemon. Let's put it that way. As is Mike Quackingbush, the guy that runs Chikara. He, he has let it overcome his life. Poor guy. Yeah. So if it can happen to Mike, it can happen to you. It can happen to anybody. It's really good. Because I didn't give a damn about Pokemon before this thing came out. It just appeals to people that like to collect things. Yeah. You should just pretend they're shoes, honey. And then you, you know. I don't really own that many pairs of shoes. As much as you like to fancy, I don't. Yeah, I always see them, different Pokemon, when I look in this group that I've never even seen before. Here's somebody with a gigantic Snorlax pillow. <laughs> I would totally buy but anyway, yeah, it's called Pokemon Go San Francisco, Pokemon Go, if you're in San Fran, but there's plenty of Facebook groups. We also have Kitty Mania on Facebook, if you like to post crazy cat memes. Oh, Kate, oh the cat Samson. Oh, yeah, Samson oh, the cat from New York. I mean, he's not news, cause, but he's a cat in New York City that is about four feet long. I don't know how much he weighs. Um, what is he on Instagram? Hercules know, or something Instagram. like that? Or something? Um... Anyway, you gotta you gotta see this cat. He's just he is ridiculous. Like, he, yeah, he He's is enormous. 
Let's see. Enormous. Like, uh, seriously, what is he? The Maine Coon cat. It's he's a Maine Coon. White is, and brown. He's so and fluffy. And he is... Um, he's insane. I mean, they have him... What is his name? Samson. I know. I am looking for his Instagram name. Oh, I don't know. He's great. I think I follow him. Oh, man. I can't believe you don't follow him. Oh, maybe not. We'll, put, we'll look him up. He has 10,000 Instagram followers already. Look him up. Amber Rose is busy turning pictures of people that aren't her. Yeah. Oh, we gotta find Samson. Samson the cat. Makes more money than I do. Um, uh, we don't no, he eat. does is sit around and lick his own butt all day. Nala, you're doing it wrong. He oh, is yeah, Cat Stradamus. Oh, K C A T S T R A D A M U S. Did you imagine the? He is four he feet is? long, twenty eight pounds. Do you well, imagine I, the poops that come out of that cat? I don't know how he could fit in a litter box. That's my question. He must just go poop in the backyard like a dog, or something. But yeah, he is at Castradamus on Instagram, and he, you could just YouTube him and find a, a clip of me. It's like a. He looks like a, a Saint Bernard crossed with a cat. Basically. Yes, yes. What? Um, anything else going on? I don't know what else we did this week. I think that is it uh, for now. Um, yeah. Can you believe it's almost the end of the summer already? Well, our summer hasn't even started. September starts the summer out here. You know what I mean. Well, I, I, it doesn't register with me anymore. So I don't go to school and the weather isn't hot. So. I didn't even realize I summer was about it just to end. Drives me nuts. But all you teacher friends out there that like to rub it in when, you know. Your summer vacation starts? Ha ha Back to school, suckers. Not bitter at all. Yeah. It's me making faces at the microphone right now that you can't see. Although I don't miss the traffic that it causes. Well, it doesn't really cause traffic for me. Out here. Like school buses? No, we're not really near major. I mean, there are schools near us, but I don't ever see a bus. Not really. No. But for some reason, the bus traffic is very low here. Mm. It's because they're never on time. So how could they cause traffic? They're never there. Bastards. Look to you, Golden Gate Transit. Bunch of pricks. Hey, you get your money's worth. Exactly. But they do have Wi-Fi. It's not a great time to play Pokemon Go. On the bus. On the way to work. That's how I caught my first Pikachu. Right by the Levi's uh, campus. (sighs) I said, nobody on this bus. Move! Caught him real quick. Went back to what I was doing. Um. Hmm? What else? I think that's it for now. I feel like we have so much more to say, but not really. Well, we missed the Stockton Con. We were going to go out there and finally get to meet our buddy Conan. But I think he's going to do some... We have the San Francisco Comic Con coming up September 3rd, 2nd and 3rd. Labor Day weekend. I think it's in the Mission. I'm not sure. Oh, the Mission. Oh, we went to the Mission for dinner. Did we? Oh, no, no, we the Peruvian restaurant. restaurant. I wasn't in the Mission. Was it? It was in the Mission, Bobby. Oh, okay. Where I burned my tongue off. What is yeah. it with people and spicy food? Why do you enjoy burning your mouth? It was good, though. What was the name? La March. La Mocha? Mo- La Mo- Mochita. Mochita. It was yeah. good. Once you got through the fiery sensation, which blisters your tongue, yeah, the food wasn't bad. But that was my fault for not asking if it was We spicy. felt like we were in the South Bronx for a second. Yeah. All, I wanted to, all you needed was a rooster walking by. That was, was a video good. I saw the other day. A rooster with pants on. How did they get the pants on? I don't know. It's on YouTube. Let me see if you can find it for everybody. I mean, I know roosters have worn sweaters, but I've never seen them. Oh, no, he has little little blue pants. Uh, There we go. I didn't even have to finish searching for it. Uh, It's a chicken. I'm sorry, not a rooster. I was going to say. And he is just wandering around chasing the other chickens. And it looks like a rooster. He's black. And he's got little blue pants on. (laughs) How did they get the pants? I don't know how they got the pants. A YouTube chicken with pants. And you'll see a little... Chicken with, like, blue hospital pants on, apparently. Just running around, doing his thing. Probably trying to run out of the pants. But no, he just stands around and starts flapping his wings. I like, can't. I'm, like, blown away. Why am I wearing pants, is what this poor chicken is thinking. But for our entertainment, chicken. You know, it's either that or you're in a KFC bucket. Put those fucking pants on and stop complaining. They must be full of shit. I would imagine, right? The poor little dude. Oh, well. There's worse things that can happen to a chicken. How great is that, though? Seriously. And there's another one. It wasn't even the, the first one. There's another one with pink pants on. Wait, Silky Rooster Silky wearing, rooster wearing toddler. toddler pants. This is a it's, trend, apparently, in the that's South. That's not as funny as the blue one. I'm sorry. Oh, it looks the same. It's just got pink pants on. 
It's not as funny. But I just don't. What? Why did somebody look at a chicken one day and say, you know what? A chicken needs pants. No, because you know how it's be like the pantalones, el pollo y pantalones. And I've never heard that ever. I tell you about the pantalones all the time. I don't know. You're going to be like, hello, put on your pantalones. Yeah, but not to a chicken. But it's hysterical. I mean, someone very, very went, pollo, put on your pantalones. I don't know. Yeah, well, it's a very strange episode. But thanks My again. God, boy, with a tie, bro. Thanks again to, uh, well, they have ties for cats. Tie. Bow ties. Bow tie. But a tie for a chicken? Poor chicken. They're not meant to wear clothes. Animals don't wear clothes. They oh have my fur. God, my family dog loves to wear clothes, babe. You can't yeah, say that. She gets yeah, excited. Like... She jumps up and down to wear the clothes. Wow. Because they're in New York and it's freezing all the time. That's why. She likes to wear sweaters to keep herself warm. She's also a female, so she's cold 99% of the time. She got in the Sahara Desert and say, I don't know about you. We're all sweating, but I'm colder than the rest of you. That'd be the woman out in the desert. Any men listening are nodding silently right now. As their girlfriend listens long. Because it's the truth. It's a pollo with pantalones. Huh? I'm going to put pants on Nala. She's sleeping, covering her face in disgust right now. Because she can't believe that we own her. That's a poor thing. I think we're done. I think we're done. All right. Well, even though we said we'd catch everybody next week uh, a little while ago, we lied. Well, we will catch you guys next week. But now is the end of the show. Not before. Hopefully you didn't cut it off as soon as the interview was over. Maybe I'll edit that out. Maybe I'll edit this out. It's like you, breaking the fourth wall. Do you think you can create Inception. a little meme with the chicken and the pantalones? Yeah, I'm sure. If I could think of something to say. Sorry. Yeah. Chicken with pants meme, I'm sure it already exists. It's Pe- awesome. People don't waste time. It's like the goal-scoring cat that has his arms up in the air. That's so great. This cat just has a habit of sticking his her paws straight up in the air. Looks like a referee giving the goal signal in a football game. <laughs> yeah. It just the guy said one day she just sat up and or he and just stuck his arms up in here, put his paws up like he's stretching, and just stays like that for a couple of seconds and then sits back down. It's like that cat that sits and crosses its legs like a person. <laughs> Cats are weirdos. I think they're aliens from outer space. They just come down and get humans to pay for their food and give them free housing while they pretend to ignore them. And yet people enjoy this. I don't know. I don't know about you, but I'm thoroughly entertained. I know. All right. Well, on that note, this time we'll catch everybody next week. On the podcast, podcast about, about nothing. nothing. Nada. Have fun and don't no get arrested. And don't wear pants. <laughs>